I'm Dr. Vanita Rattan. This channel is dedicated to skin of color. So today we're going to be reviewing Abaji's skincare range, so his best sellers, and if they're suitable for skin of color. If that sounds good to you, please give me a thumbs up. Right, so Abaji was actually a bit of a role model for me because he, at the time, he was one of the only doctors who was a doctor, but also a chemical formulator. And to quite a young girl, it was nice to see, actually, they just because you've studied one path doesn't mean that you can't learn new skills. And that's basically what I ended up doing was becoming a cosmetic formulator as well as a doctor. So what I did was I went to the Abaji website and I listed their products in order of bestsellers. And the number one bestseller according to them, is their vitamin C 20%, which sounds great on the surface. It's a high concentration of vitamin C. And so I drilled down further into the ingredients list and I wasn't that impressed. The reason being the fourth ingredient is alcohol. The reason they're using alcohol is as a solvent to basically dissolve the L-ascorbic acid and the ascorbyl glucoside. The thing is, both of these ingredients actually dissolve in propylene glycol, which is the first ingredient in this product list. So they don't actually need the alcohol at all. So the key here really is you want to avoid alcohol and skincare, especially on leave on products and at such a high percentage. Also, don't forget, if you've watched my vitamin C video, L-ascorbic acid is very unstable. And so if I was a formulator here, I would have added ferulic acid to this formulation in order to stabilize it. Don't forget that antioxidants work much better in combination than on their own. So this product cost $107. And honestly, for $107, I really want a product that works and has not been oxidized. So when I did the maths, I calculated this product would cost me about $50 per kg to make in my factory. And they're charging $1,600 per kg. So it just, it's, it's a lot. Uh, in addition, they decided to add fragrance, which I mean, come on, fragrance leads to contact dermatitis. It's the number one cause. It's the one ingredient that you really want to avoid. And when a doctor creates a skincare range, it shouldn't really be for consumer demand. It shouldn't be because a consumer thinks it smells good. It should be because the doctor knows that this is what's good for the skin. And through education, people will be aware that, you know, good smelling creams don't necessarily make for good formulas. So in case it wasn't clear, that one was a no for me. <laughs> Okay, so let's move on to the next product, which is a Baji Hydrate Facial Moisturizer, $43. The ingredients here are water, glycerin, capric triglyceride, parky butter, cyclopentosiloxane, acetyl alcohol, and dimethicone. These are all very common ingredients found in most moisturizers. Even um, Cetaphil, for example, moisturizing cream, which is one fifth of the price, um, has all these ingredients in it. So it's not a bad product. It's fine. It's just very expensive for what you're getting. On the plus point, I'm glad that they've added no fragrance to this product. So if you want to purchase it, please do. And even if you've got sensitive skin, um, this product will be fine for you. So the next um, product we're going to talk about is a Baji New Derm Foaming Cleanser, Foaming Gel, sorry. So the third ingredient is Cocomido Propyl Betaine. So this is a booster of the lathering effect. So it's a gentle surfactant. And that's actually why people get a lot of satisfaction out of it when you're washing your face and you have that lathering effect. You know, one of the reasons it has just so many positive reviews. It's generally considered low risk for sensitizing skin. However, you can get impurities from manufacturing, um, which can lead to sensitivity. However, I don't think that's going to be an issue with a body. For some unknown reason to me, they've used five different forms of paraben. So it would have been fine if they just stuck with methyl paraben and ethyl paraben. That would have been fine. Instead, they also added propyl paraben, butyl paraben, which is a 7 out of 10 on the irritation scale, and isobutyl paraben, which is 8 out of 10 on the irritation scale. So 
I don't really know why they did this. I'm not too fussed just because it's a wash off product, not a leave on product. Uh, but I, I was just a bit perplexed. In addition, they did decide in this product to add fragrance and pigment, uh, which as you know, I'm not a fan of. However, again, it's wash off, so it's not such a big issue. Right, so moving on to the next product, which is a Baji Sun Shield Matte SPF 50. So I actually got really excited when I saw 16% zinc oxide, which is excellent. But then they went and added homosalate and octosalate, which are both chemical sunscreens. And I think the only reason that I can think that why they did this is because they struggled to get to SPF 50 without causing a white cast on the skin. Because honestly, zinc oxide, titanium dioxide are very, very hard to manufacture and create a sunblock that is good for skin of color. Believe me, I have tried. I've been trying for years. Um, very few people, very few manufacturers have been have managed to do it. Uh, one that I love is Color Science. It's the one that I'm wearing at the moment. Um, however, I think Abaji has failed here too. And the easy, quick thing to do actually is just to add in um, chemical sunscreens. However, for a body, because the majority of their customers are going to have melasma, for melasma, you want to avoid chemical sunscreens, actually, because you don't want that thermal reaction taking place in the skin when UV hits it. So this one was a bit of a fail for me. It would have been amazing if they succeeded and created a great physical sunscreen for skin of color because I absolutely would have discussed it. Right, so moving on to Abaji New Derm Sun Fader Clear and Blender. So all of these three products contain 4% hydroquinone. So hydroquinone has been considered the best thing for pigmentation. However, it's not great for skin of color. It's much, much better for Caucasian skin. The reason being that while you're on it, you actually get very good results because you're almost suppressing the melanocyte, but it's actually too irritating for skin of color. So as soon as you come off of it three months later, which you have to do, otherwise it will damage your skin, it actually can lead to something called rebound pigmentation where pigmentation comes back and comes back worse. So, I mean, I would never use hydroquinone in any of the products that I formulate at the hyperpigmentation clinic. We specialize in pigmentation for skin of color. So we know what percentages are good for our skin and what we can handle um, and also what's just going to make it worse. So I would personally say avoid hydroquinone if you've got skin of color and you have pigmentation or if you have any form of sensitive skin, eczema prone skin, dry skin, dermatitis, again, I would avoid. Just for your own reference, here are some before and afters from the Hyperpigmentation Clinic. And you can also come and follow me on Instagram at the Hyperpigmentation Clinic, where we show you a lot of before and afters and how you treat pigmentation. The next product is the Radiance Peel, finally something that I actually really like. Um, so it's got 20% salicylic acid in it. Now salicylic acid is great for skin of color. Um, so it actually is oil soluble. So it goes into the pores, it unclogs the pores. It's great for acne prone skin and it's unlikely to lead to burns. It does however contain glycolic acid and lactic acid, which I'm not a fan of, especially glycolic acid because it's a tiny molecule can fly through the skin and lead to burns. So what I would definitely say is make sure you do a patch test, preferably in the area you can't see like behind the ear where the skin is quite sensitive and thin, um, but also you can't see it. So do that first before you get any peel done on a prominent area. And lastly, we're going to talk about a Baji Blue Peel. This is the iconic blue face, I'm sure you've seen it. it this is 15 to 20% TCA. This should not be done on skin of color ever. The reason being that it is just far too harsh for our skin. You are likely to burn with this. You are likely to pigment further and you're likely to pigment across the whole face. I mean, I just can't stress it enough. TCA should not be worn on skin of color. This is a medium depth peel, which our skin cannot tolerate. So if you do have hyperpigmentation, I think you might be interested in watching my video on dark spots, how to treat dark spots, and also my dark circles video. We are launching the world's first lip pigmentation kit for skin of color called Dr. V Lipex. So here are some before and after photos as well. 
Um, and so you, the link is also in the description box. If you've got skin of color and want to learn more, please do download my ebook. Again, the link is below. So I put a lot of time into that to teach you the best ingredients for your skin and things to avoid. So I hope you found today helpful. Any questions you have for me, please write it below. Any videos you want me to make, please write it below. Um, and you know, I will do it for you. Thank you very much.